Welcome to the Prophecy Club. Our topics are Armageddon is near, the Exodus to Israel, and sports stadiums. Now, let me just say before I get started, if you follow Prophecy Club quite a bit, if you consider Prophecy Club to be, how should I say, one of your ministries, then for your own good, I'm going to recommend that you stay all the way to the end because the last half is going to be very important for you. Why? Because when I get oil or the money to drill the well in Israel, I will obviously be spending a lot of time in Israel and I'm going to need people to help. I'm not talking about just drilling, that possibly too, but I'm going to need people for all kinds of things. And obviously the first place I'm going to turn to for possible people to call on with people that have been supporters of our ministry. In other words, you need to make certain that your name is in our database, and you get that there by contributing, obviously. But I'm also going to need people like, for example, hopefully what I can do is when we start the exodus to Israel, where we're flying people from around the globe to Israel, I want to be able to say to Israel, you vet the, the, the Jews, you decide who comes, and I'll get them there. Once their feet hit the ground, they're your responsibility. And if you'll allow us to, we like to vet the Christians. We like to decide who's a Christian, who's not a Christian, and I see the time, which I'm about to talk about, when people will be probably emailing and then conversations of the phone if you want to be one of those people that is conversing with people to decide whether they get to go to Israel, there's all kinds of jobs that we're going to need people for. So if you want to be involved with oil in Israel, if you want to be involved with sports stadiums, the things that are coming with this ministry, then you want to make certain your name is in our database. You want to be sure and listen to the second half of today's program. So... Those that are supposed to be there will take heed. So, anyway, uh, Armageddon's near Arm, uh, Exodus to Israel and sports stadiums. First of all, let's talk briefly about Armageddon. There's three things that are really glaring at us that tells us that Armageddon is getting close. One is Jeremiah 46.10. For this is the day of the Lord, the day of his vengeance. That is the day Jesus returns for the very last. That's when we get our glorified bodies and he burns the tears. That's when his sword, that's the morning star, will devour and satiate his garments with their blood. Uh, the Lord God of hosts has a, a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Now, that's the key. Then you jump to Revelation 9:14. Loose the four angels that are bound to the great river Euphrates, and they are to slay a third part of men. Then we can jump to the next one. The sixth angel poured out his vial. That happens about, let's see, six, that would be 24 hours before Armageddon takes place. Pours out his uh, vial upon the river, great river Euphrates, and the water there was dried up. Now, the water is drying up. It's almost already dry. And I started showing you a lot of pictures, but if you'll go and do a search for Euphrates drying up, you can see there are lots of pictures, lots of videos up there talking about it. Why? So that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. Come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For these are the spiritual devils working miracles going forth into the kings of the earth and into the whole world. Why? to gather them down to attack Israel where Jesus is going to destroy them. Next verse says, I come as a thief. In other words, most people will not know we're in the tribulation. We will not know that it's close to the end because they don't really care about the Bible. They don't really care about Bible. Matter of fact, a lot of people in America don't care about Bible prophecy. Then verse 16 says, He gathered them into a place called Armageddon. That is the last day of time. After it time, after eternity enters into time, time will be no more. That's straight out of the Bible. Next thing is, nations that are supposed to be aligned for Armageddon are now aligned. 
Okay, so I mean, it's getting really, really close. If you jump into Ezekiel 38 and 39, and I would love to teach through it, and I have in one of our Bible studies, so I won't go into the whole thing, but it basically says, Son of man set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, which almost all prophecy teachers believe it's speaking of Russia for lots of reasons that I'm not going to go into. But he says, Meshach, that's two word changes from the word Moscow today, and Tubol is, is uh, excuse me, Tubol is two word changes from the modern word Tobolsk, which is the largest city in Russia. Anyway, it goes. That takes a whole lot. But here's what I want to call your attention to. Verse 4, he says, And put hooks into thy jaws. The area where Jesus, where the lesson will be shown in a dream, where oil is flowing underneath Israel, is in the shape of a fish hook. So it says hook, we believe, is talking about because, well, I'll just say it this way. What, what I think is going to happen is when we hit oil in Israel, it'll be massive amounts. We're talking about high pressure of oil. And it will begin to dry the wells of all the surrounding nations around it. I don't want to cover that too much. But here's the point. Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, all of those would attack Israel in a minute today. Gomer is what is today. Turkey also, excuse me, yes, Turkey and also to Garma. Both of those are Turkey. And Turkey right now is ready to attack Israel. So we see these nations already lining up. Then you skip down. In the latter years, they will be brought back from the sword. That's talking about Israel. Gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been a waste, is brought back out of the nations. That's saying that Israel, every one of the Israelis worldwide, will be gathered back to Israel and they will dwell safely. So when Armageddon happens, it will be Israel is dwelling safely. Right now, Israel is not safely, but it's coming. Now let's talk about the Exodus. Now I'm getting to the point that is the most important part. So I had a dream October 12th, 2006. I've talked about this several times. I saw two people getting on a jet airplane. Excuse me, I saw a lot of people, but I heard a voice that said, Two people will get on a plane with a virus. Before the plane can land, everyone on board will be dead. This will be the beginning of the end of public air transportation. I was just waking up and I said, what? The voice rebuked me. said, you weren't listening. Like my wife says (laughs) quite often, you weren't listening. I read out all my life, you weren't listening. I tend not to listen. Uh, I'm just being honest with you. Then it repeated. Now this is important because it repeated. Mouth of two or three witnesses, let the thing be established. Two people will get on a plane with a virus. Before the plane can land, everyone on board will be dead. This will be the beginning of the end of public air transportation. For a lot of years, I didn't know why I was told that. Now I know. Because that's the time to buy an airline. I didn't say an airplane. I said an airline. I believe he's going to give me the money to buy an airline. Probably I'll be able to get it for pennies on the dollar. Why? Well, then public air transportation shuts down. There's going to be not just airplanes, but airlines up for sale because no one is flying anymore. And that's where I want to get an airline. Why? To fly Christians and Jews from around the world back to Israel. Now, here's part of what I've talked about many times. June 27, 2008, in my prayer clause before going to bed, I said, Lord, I hope you're pleased while we're doing these prophecy meetings. This is when I was first casting the vision for people to invest in prophetic oil. And by the way, we're not taking investments right now. Okay, We're spending about $3,500 per CD in advertising. Not many people showing up. Not many people getting saved. I hope you're pleased with what we're doing. And that night I heard words. I promise. I heard words like you're hearing right now. As a matter of fact, it woke me up and said, Stan, I will give you the money to drill the well in Israel. Well, I answered back. I said, the oil well in Israel? But there was no answer. <laughs> then, sometime later, in, the, the, in, in that in the same night, he began speaking to me and showing me a lot of things. The only thing I can remember from the rest of that night was he showed me Leslie holding up newspaper after newspaper after newspaper, and they were the headlines talking about, like, Omar Usher's in Palestinian state and those kind of headlines. And he said, when those prophecies I gave your wife 
begin to come to pass, people from all directions will begin to turn and listen to your ministry. Now, that's important with some things I'm about to show you here. In other words, part of what I'm trying to get across to you is Prophecy Club, well, as a matter of fact, the, the Lord told Leslie in an audible voice, uh, it was over 20 years ago, that one day the Prophecy Club would be the number one prophecy ministry on the globe. So he's got lots of things planned for us. Right now we're very small. They're trying to keep us small, you know, the platforms. But there's a time coming when people are going to turn and start listening. Okay. Then November 8, 2014, I heard in the night, I'm going to show you the end from the beginning so you can warn my people. I thought, great. What's that? Well, about 10 months later, Eddie Chumney called. He said, I need to spend a total of three days with you. So he came. And I cleared my schedule from 8 in the morning to 11.30 at night. We covered. We read the Bible. We read over 500 verses. I had several Bibles open, <laughs> paper Bibles. I had my computer Bibles open. And I discovered something about myself. I get overload. I get mental overload, which explains why I didn't do well in school. But anyway... Uh, about every two hours, I just have to say, look, I, I got to take a nap. And sure enough, I would lay down, I would take a nap for 15, 20 minutes, then I'm back up, and we go for another couple more hours. So as we're going through, and he's, we're reading the Bible together, he kept saying, God sent me to show you the end from the beginning. Well, it didn't click with me that this was God's fulfillment of what he had said. He said, if you want to know Revelation... You have to know how it begins. It begins in Genesis, continues throughout the Bible. He showed me the prophecies, all of the prophecies. He said the whole Bible is prophecies. He said, for example, Moses and Aaron standing before Pharaoh is a repeating prophecy with the two witnesses, Moses and John the Revelator, standing before the Antichrist. Nebuchadnezzar requiring all people, nations, and tongues to fall down and worship the golden image the king had set up repeats with Nebuchadnezzar once again. Being the beast, the Antichrist, uh, ascendeth out of the bottomless pit, becoming the Antichrist, who requires all people, nations, and tongues to fall down, worship the image of the beast, and receive his mark. Now, that's important. That's a key to some things I'm about to show you. Then, in October 2021, uh, God began to speak to my heart. I needed to order some wheat. This is before Joseph Kitchen started, but this is how it got started. So I ordered... <laughs> <laughs> you probably think this is crazy. I ordered 4,000 pounds of wheat. What do you do with 4,000 pounds of wheat? Well, it took up one whole space in our garage. So I asked the guys at the, the church to come over. We put it all in pails, and now it's up in a storage uh, place here in the DFW area. So anyway, as I was packing the 4,000 pounds, he spoke to my heart and said, you need to order 10,000 more. 10,000 more pounds? And sure enough, he sent the money, so I ordered it. We put that 10,000 more into pails. And from that was how Joseph's Kitchen got started, because he spoke to my heart, said that, yes, the people that you know are going to be needing this food because wheat is my end-time starvation prevention. It's my famine food. It's what fed the world during the seven years of famine, okay? So if you're looking to get some kind of food to survive the days ahead, I'll send you to josephskitchen.com. Now, on to the, this ties in. So then 11-3 of 2024, as in just a few days ago, Brandon Biggs was shown in a vision. He says, I've warned about this plague coming. Donald Trump was president when the plague was released. He announced he is shutting down air travel. I hope you're hearing this. I saw a massive plague coming again that was worse than COVID on steroids. It was huge. 350 million plus people died worldwide. I saw 330 million die in the United States. The Lord showed me people falling like gnats. People around you that you thought were really strong Christians walking with the Lord were in fact walking in compromise. That's why I preach such a strong word telling you that you should not ride the fence. If you're playing Christianity, you're in trouble. In other words, now's the time to clean up your life. Now, maybe this can tie together in just a second. 
Ezekiel 38, this is associated with the very last days. And it says at the same time when the Russians come down to attack Israel, it says, I'm going to, they, Israel, or the Russians, excuse me, the Russians will say, I'm going to say in my heart, I'm going to go up to the land of unwalled villages. Well, where are the unwalled villages? Because it's sure not Israel. You go to Israel, they got lots of walls, bars, and gates, okay, all over the place. I believe in walled villages, and I've been praying this for I don't know, at least 20 years, every day of my prayer. Allow me to form the, the, the land of unwalled villages, place for the woman to flee. And I believe that I'll be doing that. Um, I've known that for a long time. The unwalled villages is a place where I fly Christians and Jews from around the world to Israel, a place where this specifically is going to be probably mostly for the Christians. Those are arrested, dwell safely, dwelling without walls, having neither bars nor gates. Gathered out of the nation, gotten cattle and goods, and dwell in the midst of the land. I think that I'll be part of forming that. Now, let's jump to 520 of 2018. So what happened was Maurice was, Clark was in town to make a DVD. And we took him and his wife, which has gone to be with the Lord now, uh, to, to lunch. So we're sitting there at lunch, and all of a sudden he said, Lord, now? He said, the anointing just arrived. I have a word for you. So I grabbed my cell phone, and I turned it on record, and I started recording. Now, you have to understand sometimes Maurice doesn't complete a sentence. But by the Spirit, I knew what he was saying. So here's what he said. Maurice to Stan Leslie in the Prophecy Club. Maurice and his wife, Devorah, ministered to the Spirit of Prophecy Church. Afterwards, we went to lunch, as I said. I grabbed my cell phone and began to record. He said, I'm giving you an international television ministry. I think that that is not about teaching Bible prophecy or not like what I do in the Prophecy Club now. I think that that is calling Christians and Jews from around the world. Eddie Chumney and I have already talked about this. He's going to be the guy that primarily I put on that international radio and TV where he is going to be calling the Christians and Jews to go online, to call a number if they want to go to Israel. If they think they're qualified to go to Israel, Jews will have to be qualified by blood. Christians have to be qualified by they got to have Jesus in the heart for real. they got to have Jesus in the heart. He says, you're going to have international television ministry. You're going to release the now words of God both the annual report on the revival and the judgments. The Lord says, this is what you've been preparing your whole life for. He says, there's three prophetic books that you will memorize, and I promise, I, I did not, I didn't hear this part. I typed this up, but I did It's saying I'm going to memorize three books, three as in I memorized the book of Revelation, but I had no idea to do this. Now, the interesting part is this, let me back up. This happened in 2017. Here, let me just look. I, I intended to look at this before I got on here, but since I didn't, uh, I will pull it up. Okay, so this is when I memorized the book. This is where I wrote it out. And I wrote here the date I started memorizing it. I started 11 27 of 2016. This was after, well, here, let me, it says this. This is, uh, I have the, the date I finished too. Give me just a second to find it. Finished 527 and 17. So I had already memorized the book of Revelation at this time, but it, <laughs> I didn't see it. it. went right over my head. So anyway, let me go back here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So it says, you're going to memorize three prophetic books. You will memorize. You'll have guests on it. It's going to be a cutting edge, and you're going to do a report on both kingdoms of light and darkness. You're going to be here for the greatest harvest of souls, and God says it's not long now. I'm waiting for the precious fruit of the earth. God says you're going to shift into this media thing as your primary focus. The Lord said he's going to bless it greatly. Now, he's about to say some amazing things, and I just now understand it. You'll be one of the great prophetic voices of the tribulation times, and the Lord is going to supernaturally protect you and provide for you. I see this daily program and God's going to give you influence because you're going to comfort those that are going through difficulties. Right now, you are bringing forth a lot of hidden stuff because right now, people can't comprehend the massive changes coming. 
For most of the world, judgment is not real. To them, it's like the Independence Day movie. They just can't comprehend what is coming. But in the next few years, television and the Internet are going to completely merge. How do you know that? But today, it's almost there. And God's going to exalt you at that point. You're going to report on what's happening, and God's going to give you what is going to happen in the advance to protect the remnant. The end time is going to be the greatest revival. We talked about this, greatest revival at the same time. Future growth. The time hasn't come yet, and that's what you're waiting for. And that's why you're not received yet. You're so passionate about prophecy because it's your primary purpose. You've been trained your whole life for this moment. You must discern and separate the precious from the vile. Then you'll be as my mouth. The time will come when you won't have access to the written word. You'll get up and proclaim it. God says you're going to memorize the word from now on. And God's going to give you supernatural memory. He's going to speed up the memorizing, and it's going to get faster and faster, and it'll get to where you'll just see it and remember it. Well, I was getting pretty close to that by the time I got to the end of the book of Revelation, and I've thought about, I started memorizing Daniel, and it just seemed like it's too much trouble, and I was thinking about maybe memorizing Matthew or John, but never got to it. So we'll see what happens. And the Lord says, that's something to contend for. Oil in Israel. He says, you're going to have a work in Israel. And by the way, he had no idea that oil in Israel was part of what I was supposed to be doing. Okay? We were just getting to know each other. You're going to have work in Israel as well. The oil is coming forth. Oil and gas is coming. And, you don't, and don't be discouraged because part of it is your message. You're going to be helping the end time Jews. You'll be over in Israel, and you'll go back and forth, and God's going to translate you back and forth. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? Keep yourself in the right place, as in being righteous, with God so that you won't disqualify yourself. Now, I need to give you a disclaimer. Anytime I talk about oil in Israel, I have to say, we cannot guarantee we're ever going to get the money drilled for or hit oil in Israel. This is not an attempt to offer stocks or securities. He says, I see you in Israel. But you are outside of Israel, east of Israel, in Jordan. (laughs) I can tell you about a time when a prophet said, by the way, I'm supposed to tell you this. And he said that phrase. He said, I don't know what it means. Well, as soon as he said, I knew exactly what it meant. And it was an additional place that I had never seen the scriptures before. He didn't know what it meant. I knew exactly what it meant. And that's where to drill. So, (laughs) <laughs> Maurice said some things he could not possibly know. Matter of fact, Leslie sitting there, she didn't understand it. I knew exactly what I was talking about. I see you in Israel, but you're outside of Israel, east of Israel in Jordan. You were down real further. It's towards it's Saudi Arabia or near there, and there's oil there. I'm just getting a vision now. You're going to be helping the 144,000 Okay, 144,000 show up five months before Armageddon, excuse me, six months before Armageddon. You're going to be helping 144,000. You're going to be helping us, but it's like there's a particular tribe that you want to be connected to. But you're going to be helping with the communication and the provision, oil in Israel, okay. You're going to be a financer, and that's my heart. And the Prophecy Club is going to be vital, and even the Israeli army is going to listen to you. God's going to put around you prophetic people, even stronger prophetic unction than you. They will help you protect and provide for the Jews. You are strategically placed. The Lord is going to use you in this darkest hour, the very darkest hour in all history. You're going to be mightily used. Israel is going to expand its territory. We've talked about that. You know that. I don't know how. They're going to have the land that God promised to Abraham, and there's hidden things there, and you're called geographically to this particular place. I could show you on the map. I can see it in my head. It's south and east of the present Israel, south and east of the Dead Sea. I see a circle. I don't know what that means, but that's what I see. It's four assignments in the next season. It's geographically, and it has to do with oil. It has to do with spiritual intelligence. Then he switched to talking about the world economy. 
The Lord says, don't be lulled into a place of sleep right now because this outpouring of grace is temporary. In other words, when Trump comes to power, there'll be a brief time of great revival, but it'll be brief. I don't know if it's six months, a year, but I, it'll be brief. This outpouring of grace is temporary. It's the grand finale. God's just pouring out this one, his wonderful goodness one more time. It's going to get bad, and when it, it'll happen, and when it does, it'll happen fast. And when it does, that's when your ministry is going to be received. It's not really received right now, but when things get difficult, that's when you will see it be accepted. Difficult job. He said, it is coming, and you have the very difficult job of pro-warning, or we would say pre-warning. That's hard to stay in because it hurts. It hurts because people don't like to be warned. Yeah, tell me about it. They don't want to hear it. But you must continue. I know God's hands are on you. God's hands are on you to do this. You must keep your hand to the plow. You must keep going. It's not going to be that long before there's going to be some serious, serious, I see explosions. I see judgment. That's right. Fall of America was started with an internal revolution Russia attacks. The public was amazed to see ancient Bible prophecies speaking to their modern world. This book will not only introduce a secular world to Bible prophecy. He's talking about this book. Interesting, he says the word secret here in just a second. I believe he's prophesying this book. This book will not only introduce the secular world to Bible prophecy, but every Jew and Christian will read it to find out the secret prophecy. He uses the word secret. Placed in the Bible just for them, a secret the Jews were told was there. The Christians will recognize, but none has seen it. What is the secret? To my knowledge, no one has been shown this. I agree. I'm the only one. This secret has been hidden for almost 2,000 years. For almost 3,500 years, every Jew has been keeping the feasts. They know them. Okay, so <laughs> what it's saying is, I'll write a book that has to do with the secret in the feasts. See the bottom line there? Feasts. That's what this book is. In one of the visions, he showed me the word first fruits, found in Leviticus 23.10, and Revelation 14.4 is a link, a secret door that links the feasts to the prophecies of Revelation so that they can put in, be put in the correct chronological order. That's what he's saying. That's what he's saying. But even though I heard it and I typed it up, at the time I didn't understand it. Now, I understand it. So, I mean, that alone confirms this whole prophecy. You see, because a prophecy is not where, well, this is of God, that's not of God. Either it's all God or it's not God. So, this whole prophecy is confirmed as far as I'm concerned. Let me back up. But every Jew and Christian will read it to find out the secret prophecy placed in the Bible just for them. A secret the Jews. See, the whole point of the feasts is they are the pattern of the last seven months. That's what the feasts are. God has had the Jews <coughs> excuse me, practicing those feasts for 3,500 some odd years. Why? Because when they see that the feasts through this book is the last seven months, they have to accept that Revelation is true. If they accept Revelation is true, then they have to accept that Jesus really is the Messiah. He really is their Savior. All of this is really true. So all of this makes perfect sense. I mean, my, I, was, I was floored yesterday when, when somehow I got back and I had to pull this prophecy up. Okay, let's go on. About done. But to the non-Christian, Easter is about Easter egg hunting. To the Christian, it's about celebrating the resurrection of Christ. But to the Jew... It is celebrating Passover, unleavened bread, two of the feasts they are commanded to observe each year. They are all connected to the feasts, as this book is. 
but they don't know a secret is hidden in them. They will read, they will read this book. Now, what that is saying is that there is a secret in the feasts in this book. And this is, well, remember the audible voice said the seven, seven seals play over seven years. The seven trumpets play over seven months. And the seven vials play over seven days. And then the feasts, these are the seven feasts. Let's see if I can hold it up. The seven feasts are along the bottom, okay? The seven feasts. And then the prophecies are along the top, tying to them. All in that, you can look at this till you're blue in the face. You won't totally understand it till you read the book. To get the book, you go to prophecyclub.com. One's $20, but don't do that. We offer them in shrink wrap sets of five. I think it's $35 for five copies. Why? Because we're not just trying to sell one book to you. We want you to be part of the end time army, teaching prophecy, working miracles. That's the reason you got four extra copies of this book for $35, total five copies, four copies to give away. And that's the reason all of these charts are in there, so that you can truly understand it. I believe, and I know this sounds arrogant, I know it sounds self-serving, and I'm sorry, but I believe I'm the only one that's been shown the secret door to understand Bible prophecy, as the prophecy says. I didn't even understand it at the time. I'm the only one that's been shown this. Yeah, but Stan, what about in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established? Well, this is the second witness. He said it's coming. Okay, so there are two witnesses to this. This is the prophecy. This is the revelation or the fulfillment of it. Now, vision to write the book. Sunday, March 11th, 2018. I was at church early. I was encouraging people to come later on in the day and watch me speak and make a next DVD in the middle of the sentence. All of a sudden, I saw a vision. It was faster than a blink of an eye. I saw that I was to write this book and that this book would become very popular. I was shown in a vision I need to write a book because if I hadn't been shown that vision, I wouldn't have. And what the vision showed me is that some things cannot be learned by just audio and video. In other words, you can talk to your blue in the face, but they'll never learn it. Some things can only be learned through a written, in this case, a chart too. Because it's that complicated, it's that deep. And it took years, it took me memorizing the book of Revelation, but it was the revelations of God that, so I mean, look, I, I know it sounds arrogant, okay, I'm sorry. But God, God gave me this book. I don't think he gave me the book because I, I memorized the book of Revelation. I think he gave it to me because there's a lot of things he wants people to start listening to, like Dimitri's testimony, you know, the suitcase nukes, the fall of the dollar, a lot of prophecies. A lot, I mean, you know, I'm kind of the center point for what God is speaking. Uh, and so, I mean, if you want to know what's coming... Listen, a prophecy club, get this book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy at prophecyclub.com. Go get the book. And like one lady said, it was, I was in line signing books. She stepped up and she said, I'll tell you something. She said, I'm an avid book reader. I've been reading two or three books a week all of my life. She says, I ordered your skinny little book. And I looked at that and I said, I'll blow through that in three hours. He says, that was two weeks ago. And I talked to her a couple of months later. She says, it did take me a while to get through the book because it's not complicated, but it's deep. Because one book teaches you the things you need to know <clears throat> in that you are an end time warrior about to go through the seven years of tribulation. This book helps you to understand Bible prophecy, prophecyclub.com. Now, let me also say, we're going to need helpers for sports stadiums. 
I'm going to need helpers with oil in Israel, helpers with an airline, helpers with flying people to Israel. And where am I going to get them? I'm going to get them from our database, from people that believed in our ministry enough to support. So, Stoner, you're saying I've got to make a donation to be a part of it? Well, I mean, how else? How, how else am I supposed to decide who really wants to help our ministry? Okay? You'd do the same thing, right? Prophecyclub.com. If you don't want to lose your life's savings, if you have an IRA or a 401k, the thing to do is call 800-200-GOLD. 800-200-GOLD. These folks are Christians, and they specialize in helping people not lose their life savings in the event of a stock market crash and things like that. Look, most of the 401ks, most of the IRAs are in paper, backed by paper, and as Lindsey Williams says, if it's in paper, it's worth the paper it's written on. You can lose it all. 1-800-200-GOLD. 800-200-GOLD. Hey, give them a call. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't cost you anything. See if they can give you some good advice.